Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Diversity Demo Day. We had a few technical difficulties, but this is the first Diversity Demo Day ever, and we have a bunch of youth helping us put this event on, so we're having some fun behind the scenes. Diversity Demo Day is an online event that combines the tech startup demo day with a celebration of NYC's number one competitive advantage is cultural diversity. My name is Miguel Sanchez, and I'm one of the co-founders of Metabronx. Metabronx is the leading accelerator program in New York City that's, that focuses on underrepresented founders of color, women, and LGBT communities. Also, we focus on high growth technology startups. We also, at the same time, create an entrepreneurship, <laughs> an entrepreneurship education program that places youth from the community in these startups so they can learn the technology of the future and learn how to create jobs in the future. Philip. You're on mute. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Philip Shearer, also co-founder of Metabronx. This is an event in two parts, introduced by three special guests. First, what? What about now? Wow. Can you hear me? Okay, fine. <laughs> you seem to be experimenting with technological difference. Okay, so this is an event in two parts, introduced by three special guests. First, Amanda and Dahlia will introduce part one, which are startup pitches from the five startups of the winter 2020 startup cohort. Then Dominic will introduce part two, a short ceremony to honor the Metabronx Youth Fellows from 2018 to 2021. And at the end of the event, you'll be able to meet the startup founders at their own virtual offices. This landmark event is entirely produced by youth from communities that are almost always underestimated, which is a shame because investing in the entire US population after all, is a simple matter of economic logic. As a country, if we want to stay competitive in the global economy, then we need absolutely everyone's talent to be developed. Our first special guest today can tell you about this herself. It's my great pleasure to introduce the assembly member for the 84th district of the New York State Assembly in the South Bronx, of course, a continual source of inspiration to Miguel and myself for years, Amanda Septimo. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much, Philip, for that lovely introduction, and thank you for having me here today. I am always excited to be doing anything with Metabronx um, because I know that it is so committed to the principles that we're committed to in the South Bronx. Um, and for me, that means specifically growing an ecosystem that is focused not only on workforce development, but also on actually growing an economy. I think, you know, as someone who works in government, we talk a lot about workforce development and how we will change the economic future of places like the South Bronx and give people economic opportunity, economic mobility. Um, but what does that actually mean, right? We see it manifest itself as workforce training programs, um, as job development programs, as vocational training. Uh, but I think that Metabronx does something that is really unique in that it also thinks about the fact that when you train people for opportunities, you have to then think about these opportunities being available on the other side. And so that requires growing a technological, in this case requires growing a technological ecosystem where you can pick up these skills, you can grow your entrepreneurship, you can be a student in these programs and then have somewhere to then go. Um, and, and when I say somewhere to go, I mean a company that you can then work for, right? Because we can't all, uh, as much as we'd all love to, we can't all go work for Google and we can't all fight for the same 10 Facebook. And frankly, we shouldn't have to, right? We should be in a world where we are building an ecosystem in the South Bronx that can 
we're, that we're building a pipeline essentially that can make sure that people are going from job training into companies that are culturally sensitive, that are rooted in the Bronx, that are rooted in community and that share the same values in everything from workforce development and hiring all the way through to product, to sustainability, um, to environmental justice and, and other values. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I know Meta Bronx is so special uh, and as as a freshman legislator, I actually was able to fund five different groups this year, um, and one of those groups that I that I found that I funded was Meta Bronx um, to the tune of seventy five thousand dollars this year. Um, I am a freshman, so give me a couple of years and we'll add some zeros. Um, but you know, I'm I'm really excited about that investment, not only because every dollar makes such a difference, but because I think it it. Uh, speaks to the idea that we need to start putting public dollars into investing in startup communities and all of the things that they offer our community. Uh, I know that up to now there has been this kind of permanent resistance to invest in kind of experimental space, startup communities, etc. cetera. Uh, but the reason that I put this funding forward is because I know that investing in Metabronx investing in these startups is actually investing in community because there is a ripple effect that is that multiplies a hundred times over in all of the things that come just through this process. Um, and so that's something that I'm really deeply proud of at this point. Um, but I also want to make sure that we're also thinking about ways to continue expanding public private partnerships, thinking about ways to bring public dollars into the space um, to match the innovation that private dollars uh, readily fund all the time. Um, but, you know, I think in that same vein, uh, we hear people talk about the South Bronx a lot and investing in the South Bronx. And we see a lot of interest in the South Bronx. Um, particularly, we, we also hear that the, the unfortunate reality that the South Bronx is the poorest congressional district in the nation, which is true. And that's a reality that we want to change. And I know that the work that Meta Bronx is doing goes a long way to changing that. Um, but, you know, I think we all need to take a good hard look at how we do work along the way. And so there's a lot of interest in the South Bronx right now and making sure that we develop uh, Silicon Alley in New York and, and the Bronx is primed for it and has been doing that work and been deliberate about growing that work and thoughtful all of those things. Uh, but in the same in the same exact moment, the Bronx is the only village cap community in the entire nation that doesn't have a fund connected to its work. And so if we're going to really think about equity and we're going to really think about economic mobility and giving people opportunity and changing people's lives, then we need to examine our own concepts of equity and what they mean um, and how we genuinely show up to the work in a way that is um, challenging the systems that exist right now when equity is not at the center of them. Uh, and so I am discouraged by the fact that we're the only village cap community that doesn't have a fund connected to it. Um, but I am really con committed to not only supporting Meta Bronx through its work, but also establishing that fund and making sure that we're once again thinking about equity and, and what it means at every step. Um, and I think in this case, it means making sure that we are investing in our entrepreneurs, not only through Meta Bronx and the Accelerator programs, but also through making sure that we're investing in them financially, right? And that we're giving these startups the same opportunities that every other startup around the country gets when they're in to these um, Accelerator programs. Uh, and so with that said, I feel like I've been talking a lot, but I, I want to say thank you to the students who are here and have helped produce this. I'm sure you've, you're working hard and you've worked hard up to now. Congratulations, good luck, and thank you to the entrepreneurs who are pitching today. Um, this is quite a feat, and I'm, I'm so excited to see the work that you all will put forward. Um, and thank you to everyone else who is here, who is on this call, um, to investors, to, to supporters. Um, you being here signifies that you care about the Bronx in some way. You care about its advancement. And that is deep to me, and I am deep, deeply grateful for that. Um, as I mentioned, we are looking forward to uh, making sure that we get a fund established for this Village Cap uh, community and would look forward to any partnership in those efforts. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me. You can find me anywhere that you can find people on Twitter, on Instagram, over email. Um, I'm highly uh, accessible. There is my, my Twitter handle. It's at Amanda Septimo. We try to keep the brand simple. Uh, and digestible. Uh, and thank you again, Philip, for the introduction. Thank you for having me. Congratulations and good luck to everyone today. Well, thank you, Amanda. It's an honor and a pleasure to work with you always. In 2019, uh, Metabronx had a milestone uh, development. We were selected by Village Capital as one of six Ville Cap communities across the country 
the only one in New York City. They were looking for startup accelerator programs that are also building innovation ecosystems in places that are typically overlooked. I will let our next special guest explain in more detail, community builder and platform manager of Global Ventures at Village Capital, Dahlia Joseph. Thank you, Philip. Hi, everyone. Uh, like he said, my name is Dahlia Joseph, and I am the platform manager at Village Capital. Uh, Village Capital is one of the largest organizations in the world that is supporting impact-driven seed stage startups. And so we license our curriculum to incubators and accelerators and other entrepreneur support organizations around the world through our VILCAP community program, which is where we began our wonderful partnership with Metabronx. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that we were so excited to work with Metabronx through VILCAP communities is because of their dedication to uplifting the youth through the intersection of innovation. Uh, another reason is their dedication to the Bronx community, uh, the Bronx community. And so we envision a world where locally led innovation organizations have the ability to raise a fund and run effective programs. And, and in doing that, that empowers entrepreneurs that have lived experience and also shifts those power dynamics in both philanthropy and venture capital. Uh, and so partnerships like Village Capital and Metabronx really helps build you know, a stronger entrepreneurial infrastructure for founders in the Bronx and, and beyond. And this contributes to building a massive community of practice around wonderful organizations like Metabronx. And so in an effort to help shift those power dynamics, I invite all of the founders and investors here today uh, to connect with investors through our Abaca platform. So Abaca is a village capital matching platform that connects investors uh, with impact-driven entrepreneurs. And it is centered around village capital's um, investment readiness method methodology, um, which helps companies, uh, startups, benchmark and track their venture investment level. And so you can benchmark your company's progress and meet investors. Um, and you can sign up for free today at abaca.app. Uh, if you have any questions about the platform or just want to you know, chat, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I believe Philip and Miguel have my email, happy to share that with folks and congratulations and thank you guys so much for having me today. So thank you, Dahlia. Um, it's always been a pleasure to meet you and to be partnered with Village Capital. That Abaca system is a game changer if you're a startup founder, understanding how to formalize and, and create a system for uh, communicating with investors has been priceless for Metabronx and our startups. Um, so we're heading to the to the fun part of the show. Not to say that before it wasn't, but now the startups are about to pitch. But before you see our startups, I want you to understand that when you see our startups pitch, we also had our students and our apprentices tell the story of the Metabronx ecosystem in their own words. So you see a few short clips before and after all the startup pitches. And that's the next thing you will end up seeing. Enjoy the show. There's been 200 plus students working at Metabronx over this summer, working with our five startups and helping produce this event from 45 different schools. So that shows you the impact that this ecosystem is starting to create. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. And so now, I would like to introduce a company. Through Metabronx, the youth of disenfranchised groups are hired as interns, presenting with their first chance to learn and develop essential technological as well as entrepreneurial skills. Metabronx has opened doors for lots of teens in the Bronx to have the ability to show dedication and motivation to work and be with groups of people to bring out lots of ideas and have fun. How did you meet and why did you start talking about this problem you are solving? 
Hello, my name is Marvin Johnson, co-founder and CEO of Dashable. Now, I met my co-founder, Tony Carter, and we actually met at work um, quite a while ago. We were working on a project together, and I was really impressed with how Tony spent 48 hours at his computer uh, trying to fix the data migration issues. He was like a real beast um, behind the computer screen. So after that, we became friends and started a company called Cypherlink, and we morphed that into a company called Icobo, where we actually built a global money transfer company, where we had customers in 120 countries around the world. Um, raised some venture capital and, and had to exit from that. And we had the idea for Dashable um, based on some conversations we had with some business owners that we knew that had to run Groupon deals. And today, a lot of businesses, a lot of small businesses in the New York, New York City area having um, a really tough time, you know, post pandemic. And our mission is to help these new these businesses find new customers and keep them coming back and also increase the lifetime value of those businesses while building strong relationships with them. Um, we actually had the initial idea after talking to some business owners that had run Groupon deals. And they were explaining to us about how egregious Groupon was to them. You know, they had crazy high costs, there's a lack of control over the implementation and launch processes. And they really were lamenting about the fact that a lot of people came but didn't, didn't return. And as Groupon users, Tony and I also had issues with Groupon, you know, getting emails consistently for th deals we will never use. Um, so we decided that if there's exists this large two-sided marketplace and both sides of the marketplace weren't happy, there had to be a better way. So we interviewed a bunch of businesses and came up with a list of um, of needs and value propositions and set out to create Dashable. Hello, my name is Tony Carter. I'm CTO of Dashable and co-founder. I met Marvin on the project. We immediately became friends because he's an ex-submarine officer. I, the ex-United uh, States Air Force, information security specialist. So Marvin and I have worked on several projects together. When we set out to tackle Dashable, uh, the thing that I want to do is make sure we build a cloud native uh, platform that allows us to scale and has security built in from day one. So we set out to build a platform that encompasses machine learning so that we can give uh, meaning, meaningful suggestions to consumers instead of things that they may not necessarily um, want to see. We set out to build a platform that would allow merchants to easily onboard within 10 minutes compared to weeks on other platforms. Um, and I wanted to do this in such a way that we can meet demand uh, when Dashable starts to scale. Yeah, one thing I'd like to get across is that, you no, know, we mentioned Groupon a lot, but Dashable is not Groupon. You no, know, Groupon just basically basically sells coupons online. You no, know, we're building a technology and marketing company um, via a SaaS-based solution. How do you know that you're solving the problem and that your method is the best one? So what's next for Dashable right now is we're raising a seed round to help us scale in New York City. We're currently live in New York City. and We've gotten um, great customer feedback from both merchants and consumers. We figured out how to sign up businesses. We have about 400 businesses on the platform right now. We have a couple thousand consumer downloads and over 1,000 deals redeemed so far on our, on our platform. What's next for your startup? What's really urgent right now, in the next two years, in five years? So in the medium term, um, we're looking to continue to scale in New York City. Once we get critical mass in New York City, we'll start a city by city rollout across the United States and they'll focus on major metropolitan areas. But we plan to exit the company uh, via liquidity event. We think the most likely um, way that will happen is via acquisition by a, a, a larger company that's focused on the same market as Dashable. Over. I get to see all the startup companies speaking to MetaBronx and receiving advice, which is also helping me prepare with my talking skills since I'm very shy and don't like to talk in big crowds. It's only been two weeks and I feel connected with it. How did you meet and why did you start talking about this problem you're solving? Hi everyone, my name is Alejandra Molina. I'm co-founder and director of marketing at Vivo. I am a polyglot and my background is in international business and marketing. I also founded a healthcare advocacy program in Peru and I am a venture partner for Republic. Hi, I'm Devin Salaga. I'm co-founder and CEO of Vivo. 
Previously, I was at Goldman Sachs for eight years in investment banking and two years at Maven Clinic, helping them scale operations and close their Series B. Devin and I are both passionate language learners. We were privileged enough to have an amazing learning education, language education. Um, we were able to achieve fluency in the languages that we were learning. And it really frustrated us that most students don't have access to the same education that we received and that none of the online language learning solutions and apps were effective in getting students comfortable speaking. And that's why we created Beboop. Beboop is a gamified language learning platform with the mission of empowering teachers to help 1 billion students actually speak the language they're learning. Beboop's better product is called Spanish Drills, which is an online group Spanish class led by a live drill instructor in which students work together to complete fun spoken challenges as well as correct each other's pronunciation mistakes. And also, we know that all around the world there's people that don't have access to high speed internet. And that's why all our drills are audio only, which makes this super accessible both for students and teachers. So during each drill, we provide the curriculum and our AI guides the drill instructors through every moment, which helps them create an engaging learning environment while tripling the amount of students they can teach at the same time. How do you know that you're solving the problem and that your method is the best one? So right now on our platform, we have 17 drill instructors and 1,500 monthly active users booking 6,000 monthly drills. So from morning till night, there's a Spanish drill starting almost every 30 minutes. Exactly. So students say there's no other product that is as convenient, accessible, and effective in helping them speak a new language. And on the other hand, <clears throat> drill instructors love our platform. And it is because we provide everything they need to manage their classes online. And also, we give them the opportunity to earn above market wages. We have a freemium B2C model where we sell subscriptions that, students, um, that give students more speaking opportunities and more attention from the drill instructors. So last quarter, we did over 20K in sales and are paying students, they're super engaged, taking on average over 15 drills a month for the six months they're on our platform. And you know, 2021 has been really good for us. So this year, we added an experienced CTO to our team and he's had experience scaling his last company to over 350 employees. We've also raised $210,000, which we put to good use recruiting our first full-time senior engineer. What's next for your startup? What's really urgent right now, in the next two years, in five years? The rest of 2021 is going to be all about unifying our product experience for both our students and our drill instructors, while building a foundation that we can support multiple languages beyond Spanish. And, you know, with our gamified platform, our AI, and our easy to teach curriculum, we're able to transform any charismatic person into a supercharged language instructor. By focusing on our instructors is how we are going to help 1 billion students become fluent in a new language. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Este quote is the de una muchacha que se llama, de una persona que se llama Corey Scott. Y dice, solamente ha sido en dos semanas y me siento que estoy conectado con él. Puede mostrar su estado de exalumnos para mostrar su éxito al trabajar con Metabrooms. Y cómo cambió y preparar a sus estudiantes para el futuro. A company that helps tech startups owned and operated by women and members of culturally minority groups who are usually disadvantaged in the business world. How did you meet and why did you start talking about this problem you are solving? Hi, my name is Nico Farah, founder and CEO of Pernier. Do you remember the last time you had to shop for clothes online? Do you remember how much time you spent browsing, looking for items and try to guess 
what style would look good on you or after you pick this style, what size would fit on you. We can't virtually see the clothes on ourselves and we just have to make a guess or use our memory for a past purchase. But this is so challenging and not only is time consuming, when we end up buying the items, uh, we usually buy several items to try them at home and return what doesn't work. And the returns are always a hassle. And it's not just a hassle for us as shoppers, but also for retailers. They're spending billions of dollars on handling returns. And they're also losing revenue because a lot of shoppers, they just give up and don't buy. And when we get these items, um, a lot of times they don't fit because the size charts are all over the place in the industry. And sizing is the number one reason of the returns. So there is a solution to that, and that's what we're building. You simply need to upload an image of yourself, and we take away the hassle. You don't need to browse so many items. We give you style recommendations based on your body measurements and what would look good on your body type. We also give you size recommendation for each item you pick to know what will fit your body. And all of this simply by uploading an image. How do you know that you're solving the problem and that your method is the best one? Retailers are experiencing a lot of returns and going towards this type of solutions, especially as e-commerce becomes more and more popular. With the pandemic, they were not prepared for this accelerated demand. So they tried to use a lot of try-on technologies and fit technologies like ours. Some of them, like Walmart, went as far to acquire some of our competitors to stay ahead of the curve. In terms of our competitors um, for the size recommendation, our competitors are asking you too many questions uh, about your past purchases that you have to remember, and or they are asking for um, several images or videos that are not so convenient to capture. But all we're asking is a single image and your height and that's it we tell you your detailed body measurement and your size our try on competitors they are photoshopping the your head onto a model's body again it's not realistic or accurate but what we do is that we morph the clothing onto your body and that becomes so much more realistic and easier for you to make a decision based off. And that helps with increasing the adoption of our software. Our business model is subscription and we are generating 10X ROI for retailers. We have explored the market. We have talked to over 600 shoppers and retailers to validate our assumptions and the demand for our solutions. We have also talked to a lot of retailers through referrals we got from PR and marketing agencies. And through those, we saw great interest from retailers to um, adopt our technology. What's next for your startup? What's really urgent right now, in the next two years, in five years? This market is huge. We are starting with apparel retailers in the U.S. with over 1 million revenue. We also have the expertise to deliver on our plan. I'm an engineer myself. I'm also a serial entrepreneur, and I run the business both on the business side and the engineering side. We also have data scientists and computer vision scientists. And I have advisors that fill in the gaps in our expertise. Our dream is to make online fashion shopping as close as possible to in-person uh, fashion shopping. And um, on Premier, we are trying to achieve this dream by building these technologies. If you'd like to join us in this journey, reach out to me. Thank you.
As a young woman in brown culture who is constantly being subjected to gender discrimination, my goal in life is to prove my worth as a female. Being a female is not my weakness. It's my strength that drives me toward achieving success. They fail to acknowledge the truth. We are strong, intelligent, and capable. They undermine us because they haven't seen our full potential. A company that has done so much for the community. How did you meet and why did you start talking about this problem you are solving? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sky Davis. So happy to be with all of you today. Uh, I am a co-founder of Money Captain and uh, I founded this company with my brother, Greg. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Davis. I'm the CTO of Money Captain and um, I'm happy to be here today with you guys. So it's funny, like Greg's my older brother. So, you know, I met him the first day of my life. Um, but funny enough, uh, both of our paths actually uh, came into tech. So uh, I've been in tech about 10 years now. My backstory is in design, product design specifically. I've worked with companies like Cabbage, uh, Fundera, Angels List, a uh, slew of financial companies. Uh, and about two years ago, my brother and I decided that we wanted to build our own company. Uh, and that's where the idea of Money Captain came. It was actually originally a budgeting app uh, really meant to help people uh, kind of change toxic money behaviors, uh, focusing on saving and more so like building for the future. Uh, but then COVID hit and we realized that the product was kind of tone deaf. Uh, a lot of people lost jobs, uh, people's savings were decimated. And a lot of people in our community, we could see were struggling with paying rent, with paying phone bills, even food bills. Um, and that led us to a pivot of creating what we're currently working on, which is Small Blessings. So Small Blessings is a crowdfunding app where people can raise money for small to mid-sized bills. Hi, I'm Greg, the co-founder and CTO of Money Captain. Um, my original background is in psychology, social worker for around a decade. Um, in 2016, I switched over to software engineering. Didn't look back. Um, it was one of the greatest decisions of my life, uh, simply because I can actually see a product through and see it uh, have results and have that instant gratification that comes with success, right? So currently we're in the bill phase for small blessings. Um, we have a really good UI UX designer by the name of Sky Davis, uh, who has a lot of experience. So uh, we're confident that the product really looks and feels good. Um, like I said, we're in a build phase right now. Our launch, our potential launch date is end of summer, 2021. We hope to have it in Android, uh, Google Play Store, as well as the iOS Apple uh, App Store. Um, we also have a, we also will have a web integration where someone can actually use the app on the web, on the website as well. How do you know that you're solving the problem and that your method is the best one? Uh, our unique value prop is that we focus on small to mid-sized bills. So similar products such as GoFundMe typically typically focus on larger bills. Um, so emergency bills, uh, burial claims, uh, and larger, larger funds where we focus on smaller dollar amount. Um, we are currently pre-revenue, uh, but we are seeing growth and, and traction through just, you know, talking to folks about, about the app. What's next for your startup? What's really urgent right now in the next two years in five years? So at Money Captain Labs, we like to say that we're building wild ideas for the betterment of humankind. Um, our overall mission is to build financial products that help empower the world. So, you know, in our house every day is a new opportunity to do that. 
In terms of what we're going to be focusing on for the next couple of months, of course, it will be the release of Small Blessings. Uh, but then we're going to move full steam ahead to go back and release our premier app, uh, Money Captain, again, which is a financial app that puts a financial coach in your pocket. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about us, feel free to go to moneycaptainlabs.com and please reach out to us. Thanks. So when I went to Meta Bronx, I found I found like a lot of people who are just trying to like make the Bronx a better place and like put it into a bright light because the media always shows all the negative sides of the Bronx, but never really show like the great things that we actually do for our community. The community Meta Bronx provides is full of a spirit that continuously pushes you to be your best self, always. The needs of the people are dismissed and forgotten. The consequences with discrimination is that people are not able to have the jobs that they want because of their background. And if they do end up getting the job, then they will be treated unfairly. Providing access to the uneducated and unrepresented minority groups is our first step. A company that really values the youth and the future of the world. How did you meet and why did you start talking about this problem you are solving? The foundation of Save Away lies in observations that I think I and we have had as part of our lived experiences, both as a student uh, and participant of the retail financial services ecosystem over the last couple of decades, which has put uh, in my observation, people's spending muscle on steroids, whereas on a relative basis, their saving muscle is dying. So the time for Save Away's flagship solution, empowering people to save up more to fulfill purchases uh, they wouldn't otherwise without having to rely on credit that risks becoming debt, has never been more timely and more important than now whereby I would say the notion of it's expensive to be poor is I think never been more acutely felt. I would argue the same also applies in the realm of commerce. The people that are getting egged on to make purchases driven by impulse are the people that I share the community with. So once the user has made a thoughtful purchase through our marketplace, we are putting them in a community where they're actually saving up as part of a structured plan that involves not only them diligently setting aside their own direct deposit or allowance, but also allows the friends and family that have engaged with them and have, that have their best interests at heart giving them the best advice, but also in the process, gifting towards that savings plan, along with the best offer from sellers and brands that they have the opportunity to extend to you. So you're fulfilling that goal sustainably by saving up. And in the process, the seller is also getting you as a customer that they wouldn't have otherwise. So a very powerful economic model. How do you know that you're solving the problem and that your method is the best one? If you are going to be among those that will follow the lead of the over 15,000 pioneers who've joined our platform in ushering this game-changing movement, I thank you. I am equally thankful to a growing number of leading brands that are serving as lighthouses by being among the pioneers to join the platform in unlocking the next big frontier of commerce. What's next for your startup? What's really urgent right now, in the next two years, in five years? The vision 
to answer that question is really using that as a starting point. Not only can you extend that beyond retail and e-commerce to saving up for all those bigger goals that you have, whether it be for in the second and third generation of our product, the down payment for your first home mortgage. Looking ahead, what we see this is a platform for P2P, not just money management, but goal fulfillment. Through providing internships to high school and college students, those from hindered communities are able to discover new interests, pursue them, and secure themselves a future while doing so. Now every boy and girl has the resources at their fingertips to support, teach, educate, and learn the statistics of the finance world. The best approach to address this issue is to give opportunities for young people from these undeserved areas to learn about and experience the Bronx innovation scene. The whole Metabox organization is trying to help. Working in Metabronx is the first time in over a year I feel like a part of something. A company called Metabronx. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed the start of pitches. It's been an incredible time, of course, dealing with the pandemic, having to shift everything on the whole. We think that these are some fantastic entre entrepreneurs. Starting in 2018, we began making a short list to honor the hardest working apprentices every year. This group is called the Riverdale Meadow Bronx Youth Fellows. We've never had a ceremony for them before. So you're about to see the names of 68 people out of a thousand plus total participants from 2018 to 2021. Before we run that sequence, our next special guest is the person who co-created, and most importantly for the purposes of the South Bronx, funded the Youth Fellows Program. We invited him today because we wanted to know why did he do it. So now, one of the most innovative people we know the head of school at Riverdale Country School, Dominic Randall. It's great to um, participate in this event. Thank you, Philip. Um, thank you so much to the both of you. And my gratitude goes out to all the students involved in the production. And thank you for everyone uh, joining us today. Um, as Philip said, I'm head of school at Riverdale Country School, a pre-K through 12 independent school in the Bronx. And we've always been interested in partnering with exciting and dynamic organizations work, working to strengthen the Bronx community. Um, Meta Bronx has been an amazing partner with Riverdale community over um, more than probably th four to five years. Um, we found Miguel, Philip, and the Meta Bronx community to be an incredible investment of both time and funding. And we've helped them support and sustain their Summer Fellows Program over the years. As Philip said, they've had more than a thousand um, participants in that program. And we're gonna show you, um, be able to showcase and celebrate that work in a minute. Um, we love the Metabronx uh, mission that believes that everyone, everyone should have access to entrepreneurship, innovation and creativity and make those a part of their futures. Um, they create future freedom for the youth of the Bronx and people in the Bronx. And that's, I think, just amazing. Um, not only their, you know, what they believe they want to do, but what they're actually doing. Um, it's been our privilege to be connected with this program that helps provide opportunity for students in the Bronx to take the learning from school and apply that in authentic ways to start up projects and understanding the processes of creating products and sharing them with the world. Many times, um, it's not easy to see young people connecting their identities and capacities to future dreams. 
Metabronx is in the business of making dreams a reality. And I am humbly, and the Riverdale community is really humbly happy to be connected in a very small way to their ever evolving success. So um, as Philip said, uh, we'd like to showcase 60, 68 participants in the fellows program out of more than a thousand young people who have participated in the last years. It will also allow you an opportunity um, to think about the event today and think about how you might like to connect and participate in the future of Metabronx. Um, whatever you choose to do, I can tell you that um, it will help you magnify your impact in the world. So thank you very much for listening to me, but thank you to everyone for this uh, just wonderful event. And I'm just really um, honored to be um, a very small part of what Metabronx does. So um, I guess now we can uh, show the celebration. Thank you. I, um, So as you can see, the innovation behind Metabronx in full force, right? First, you see the, the, the technology startups that have created, pivoted during the pandemic, and all these students have gotten to see and be in meetings as we advise these startups on how to pivot, what to do, how to raise funds, how to keep their entrepreneurship um, dreams alive. We have students from the South Bronx and beyond watching those meetings. And at the same time, I'm sure a few of these startups, if not all of them, will raise funds to take themselves to the next level. And this is what I consider the second biggest innovation to come out of the Bronx, other than hip hop. Uh, so if, uh, you know, if you want to, to, to help us continue this process, you know, there's multiple ways to invest, but in first, we're gonna show you some of our current uh, sponsors. Uh, first, we have Village Capital, who you've met, Dahlia. They've helped us by providing a great curriculum for our startups and a funding path. Uh, CompSci High, which has been the first, one of the first charter schools to really back our uh, ecosystem by providing us with 
multiple, multiple years of their students coming through our program. We just met Riverdale Country School uh, head of school, Dominic. And then we have Lowenstein Sandler, which is our law firm, and they are a venture capital law firm. So they've helped us in many different ways. Of course, the NYC Department of Education, where we get a lot of our thousand plus students from. Angflow, which is a, a startup that wanted to fund Metabronx and because it was a woman founded company and she loved our, our uh, mission. She sent us uh, some, some money. Thank you. Um, and NYC Department of Youth Development, Workforce Connect is another um, sponsor that has helped us place many students. Then we have Olin College of Engineering, which is a, a partnership we've created with a college that is super innovative and is helping us to formulate the future of where do our students go from here? If they want to go to college, Olin is a great opportunity. And then we have Bronx Rising Initiative, who funded a program uh, last um, quarter that helped about 25 young people come through our program. All right. And then I say, if you really want to help us continue this going on and on, we, we have two specific ways. The first way is you can invest in one of the startups directly and or you can do what you've seen in the past uh, slide. You can help invest and sponsor Metabronx by going to metabronx.com slash invest. Uh, and that'll give you the opportunity to figure out how to do any of those things. And then finally, every one of the startups that you've seen, if you want to meet them and speak to them, and interview them. They all have offices open right now, virtual offices where you can go see which link for which startup at diversitydemoday.com. And again, thank you guys for and girls for coming out. Thank you for all the Metabronx students and apprentices now and, and any other time whenever they're watching this because this is live, but it will be online forever. So we thank everyone who's watched and helped us along this journey. And it's not the end, it's just the beginning. Thanks to all the startup founders that have allowed um, us to, to mentor them, but allowed the youth to be involved in their growth. It's just an amazing ecosystem. We, we thank our education partners. We thank our, our venture capital partners that have helped us guide us through building this program over the many years. And we look forward to scaling it up. Philip, any final words? Well. Thank you, everyone. Uh, an extraordinary summer. Yes, Meta Bronx. Thank you. Um, it's been an honor working with everyone. Uh, we think everybody's work is just phenomenal. So you will now see a credit sequence. As Miguel mentioned, you can go meet the startups, diversitydemoday.com. And yeah. Go meet the startups, diversitydemoday.com. Just say hi to them or invest in them. <laughs>